Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Juice. So most of you that have been following the channel for a while know that I like to add my own custom DCS wallpaper or, or screen menu. When you go into the game, I like to have my own custom one. And you can select from any aircraft that you own if you want to apply that, um, that wallpaper. However, I like to take my own pictures touch them up a little bit and put them in there and I want to share with you what I have selected for my warbirds because we have a lot of new guys uh, in 4YA that came over from our recent videos to fly warbirds with us um, but I wanted to show you how you could do that and uh, it's pretty easy so check it out so when I first got into DCS world I used the standard wallpaper or screen cut shots until I just started taking pictures for uh, thumbnails for my YouTube videos and I go well, you know what this would make a great wallpaper background for my end game so this is the one I have it shows as P51 Mustang but this is what I have set to the TF51 you can see that that's Gentleman Jim one of the TF51 D skins and I went ahead and custom it up a little bit I put the iHeart Warbirds in there and our our Air Warfare Grip Air Warfare Group DCS series uh, logo on it and I just like this picture. I've, I, I usually take the pictures, I send them over to my iPhone, I touch them up with my iPhone, then I send them back to my computer to use as wallpaper or thumbnails. So the first aircraft that I bought before the Hornet came out was the P-51D. I had Flaming Cliffs 3, the TF-51, and I actually thought that the TF-51 was a FC-3 type aircraft since the SU-25 that came with the game was FC-3, you know, but, you know, key commands and everything. And boy, if I had figured out that Mustang earlier, I would have loved to fly, uh, have flown it earlier. But I got into the P-51D, started dropping bombs, started frying the engine, and now it's a dream to fly. I fly both of them. If I've got friends that don't have a Warbird at all, I'll fly the TF-51 with them. Uh, if we go in various Warbirds, I'll usually fly the P-51, the one that you can carry extra tanks, weapons, it has a little bit different uh, equipment. So the next Warbird that I bought, based off a recommendation, was the Spitfire. And let me tell you that I don't fly the Mosquito, I don't own the Mosquito, but the Spitfire to me, out of all the aircraft in, in DCS World that I own, it is the hardest to taxi, take off, and manage uh, on the ground at least. But once you get the hang of it and you get your HOTUS dialed in and you get your curves and dead zone, whatever you need for your eye and for your stick to make it work for you is totally okay. I even flew with takeoff assistance uh, at first and uh, auto rudder uh, where available. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Get used to it and then slowly neck those down. You could turn those resistances. It's not an on-off type thing. You can actually turn some of that off and everything uh, at a gradual scale. You can cut it to 50% or 75% and eventually wean yourself off of it. Right now, I have all my Warbirds are completely no assistance at all. Uh, and I got a little bit of curve and dead zone in my stick, my thr uh, Thrustmaster Warthog Hotess. Now, the next aircraft, I, you know, during the... COVID 2020 sale, whatever we had when uh, when it was early winter, and ED started doing the 50% off, uh, let's you know, let's stay home sale, stay at home sale, they called it. So I said, well, let me go pick up another Warbird. It was only 25 bucks, so I went out and picked up the uh, Falkwolf, or I'm sorry, the the BF 109, the Messerschmitt, and it was really cool. It uh, reminds me a lot of the Spitfire maybe a little bit more stable. You know, one of the things it has is a tailwheel lock, which really helps out on takeoff and landing on the roll. Uh, but I enjoyed it, and then I said, you know what, I've always liked the Wolf 190. So I asked one of my buddies, Nick, I said, which one would you get? He says, well, I would get the A8 Anton. So I bought it, and I wasn't impressed with the skin, or at least the textures in the cockpit. It looks a lot better now, but to me, I think it was just because my computer was at 1080p that it didn't look good to me and I didn't have everything dialed in and I could you know I had a less capable computer back then but when I got that and the sale was still going on and I was building up bonus points I said well gee you know for for 20 bucks I could get the uh, Falkwolf 190 D9 Dora and that one that's like uh, that's like flying an interceptor compared to the uh, tank busting uh, one uh, 190 A8 Anton. And uh, so I started doing, you know, I, I went out and I started taking pictures. Tactical Pascal showed me how to use the zoom with the F2 and the F3 to get some really cool shots. Here's, this is from DCS. I'm flying by. There's a, a crescent moon about, uh, looks like it's about one 
one third waxing and that moon shot with the tail there and everything looks pretty cool uh, I have some other ones that didn't really come out as good as this this one's the one I like the best so I went ahead and used it so after that you know I had more bonus points so I think I picked up the I said you know what what the heck I have at the time the p47 wasn't out and the mozzie wasn't out so I had all the warbirds I said well let's go ahead and pick up the last one which was the I-16 Ishak, the uh, little Russian monocoque uh, low-wing airplane. And I think I got it for $15.50 with all my points and bonuses. Uh, this is a, a testament for DCS standalone. Uh, you don't get as many deals with Steam, uh, but there's nothing wrong with having Steam in, in, uh, in DCS. So in this, uh, this airplane right here was really fun. If you Google Air Warfare Group I-16, uh, you will see a really good video where I use some uh, historical video as audio for the video while I'm flying around and you get to learn about the uh, the Polycarpov I-16. And then finally, I was flying with Chuck Al one night. You guys know him from the Chuck's Guides. Uh, what a fabulous ambassador to Warbirds and DCS in general. Chuck was telling me, you know, try it. It was on the, you know, two weeks trial had already come about in DCS world. And that's another thing you can't do on Steam is you can't do the two weeks trial over on Steam, only on standalone. And it's not hard to convert over. If you only have a few modules, it's really easy. If you have a lot, then it just takes a little bit more time. But Chuck told me to try it, and so I thought I would try it for two weeks. Well, I made it like two days, and I went and bought it. <laughs> you know, it was during another sale. I uh, wanted to take advantage of 50% uh, off. And I think, actually, I think I got this at the, it was on the uh, pre-release sale. It was still out, but it wasn't the pre-buy but it was the uh, it was the uh, open alpha, you know, like you know what it, being tested and stuff like that. Uh, lost for words this morning as I am always. And uh, I tell you what, it was really cool. I thought it was going to be a lot harder because of the weight and because it does fly differently than the Mustang. But there's a lot of similarities uh, with the systems that you can have to manage and everything. So that was it for Warbird. So let me tell you, let me show you how to do this. Let's go ahead and Alt Tab. We'll go over here. I've got paint up. So this, let's say I want to change. You saw the P-51 Mustang skin. Let's say I want to change my P-51 Mustang. Mustang. All It's real easy. What you do is you go over here and you go File, Save As, and save it as a PNG, no matter if it's a PNG already or as a JPEG. Go ahead and save as PNG. Then you want to go down to your DCS World folder, Open Beta. You go to Mods with a capital M. Go to Aircraft find the aircraft you want to do which is the p51d and you go to skins number one folder me for mission editor and then you go in here and you want the base where is it at base menu win, uh, window like if i go here and view extra large icons you can see this is the one i currently have and i have that saved on my computer so i can always put it up there later but let's say i want to go like this i'll change it do you want to replace it yes you can back this up i would drag it out maybe put a you know i can actually let me show you a little tick tr uh trick here let's go uh we'll put what we'll do is i'll change the name of that we'll go one hyphen base menu window and then I will go ahead and save it. So I've already selected so the new file is going to be base menu window. And if I go back again, file, save as, PNG, you'll see now that I have that one base menu window saved, but I have the new base menu window over here, PNG, right there. So now we'll go ahead and close that and we'll run DCS World. And we'll close out the slideshow and we will run DCS World and we'll see what comes up. Remember I had this picture basically with a few add-ons and that's what's really cool too is you can take and put uh, your your squadron logo, uh, your your own custom label. Uh, you can make this as professional or as nasty as you want. Uh, nobody's going to see it on your computer except you and your mom and so I would definitely choose something good that impresses her. So it's coming up and there it is that's the new wallpaper now so if you have any questions on how to get this to um, 
to save when there's a DCS update. I have another video on that and there's plenty of them out there. Uh, but let me know if you want to see a more up-to-date video on how to run DCS updates after you uh, customize some files. You may have a custom menu in the game that you have, or custom mission in the game that you have set, or a custom menu like this, and you uh, might want to have that back when uh, the DCS world updates. So other than that, I'm Juice. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.